Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. <laughs> And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Now, can we even begin to comprehend how challenging it must have been for Jesus, who was and is God, was here before the foundation of time, involved in creation, all-powerful, all-knowing, to empty himself and be willing to come here and do what he did for us. It would like me say, like me, it would be like me saying, you know, I really am concerned about the, all the ants in the world. And so I'm gonna become an ant so I can save them. That's a terrible way to try to explain it, but maybe it <laughs> helps in some way get it across. Jesus was called the Son of Man and the Son of God. In other words, he was a man, just as, just as human as we are, filled with God. He brought God to earth and put on a human farm. We show up with a human farm, and then we have the opportunity to be full of God by receiving Jesus as our Savior and our Lord. So he is the firstborn among many brethren, a human filled with God, and we are humans filled with God. Come on, get it. He humbled himself. You can't do what God wants you to do if you're not willing to humble yourself. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. But I would like to tell you that if you won't humble yourself, he will do it for you. You can be humbled privately or you can be humbled publicly. And privately is so much better I remember our oldest son saying to me one time, he said, I, he said, I can honestly tell you that every single time you and dad have had to come and correct me, and this was after he was working for us, he said, every single time you and dad have come and corrected me, God has already tried to tell me several different times, and I wouldn't listen. Come on, if you do get corrected by somebody, even a, even a friend who loves you enough to say you really shouldn't be doing this, or you shouldn't be acting like that, if you're honest, you'll say God had already shown you. But God loves us enough that he's not gonna let us get by with just ridiculous behavior. And so he deals with us first, the Holy Spirit dealing with us in our spirit, and if we'll learn to follow that, how much easier life is gonna be. You won't have to go through all the tragic stuff. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and in due time, he will exalt you. Let me give you an example of how you can have peace. Somebody at work that you don't care for anyway. Now you understand you love them with the love of the Lord. We understand that. You love them with the love of the Lord, but you just can't stand them. <laughs> Aren't we hilarious? I love you with the love of the Lord. I don't know what that is, but it never seems to work out very good. Well, where were you when I needed somebody to help me move? Well, the love of the Lord doesn't go that far. <laughs> So somebody at work gets a promotion that you really felt like you deserved. And so now you're mad. You're mad at your boss. You're mad at the person who got blessed. 
you're even to tell the truth a little mad at God. <laughs> and if you let that fester long enough, you're going to get a little bit of bitterness in there. And bitterness is exactly what it is. It's bitter. It makes everything in life sour. And then you can, of course, go around and be the office gossip and talk about this person and talk about how unfair conditions are there. And you can just boil yourself up a mess. And then you get yourself in such a dither, you go home and you take it out on your family and you're grouchy and cranky. You all look so innocent. <laughs> or... It's so wonderful because in God we have options. <laughs> or you can say, you know what, Lord, I really wanted that promotion and I, I think I should have had it. But obviously you don't think I should have had it because I didn't get it. And so I'm going to keep a good attitude with your help and I'm going to be happy for that person who got promoted and I'm going to pray for them to do well in their new job. And I'm going to trust you to give me even something better than what I thought I wanted when the time is right. You can even put things like that in the offering plate, not physically, but Dave and I did this one time. We'd been on a, we started on a radio station, a big one that I won't name. And it was one of the first stations we went on and it was very expensive and we were on once a week and we had built up a, a decent audience and they just took us off, just like that. No reason, they just changed the programming and just <laughs> took us off. Well, that, was, that hurt us so bad. I was just broken hearted. And so, I was mad about it. I was angry about it. I was talking about them. And, you won't believe what they did. And, me, 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 me. and so Dave and I decided one Sunday at church that instead of being bothered about it, we were going to give it to God as an offering. So when the offering plate came by, as well as putting in our financial tithe, we, we gave that, we said, we're giving this to you. We're offering this to you. We're not going to keep it. We're giving it to you, and you do whatever's right with it. One year later, that same station called us and asked us to go on not once a week, but every day. We lose so much trying to vindicate ourselves instead of letting God do it for us, but that requires humility. Humility doesn't mean you're weak. Jesus was meek, and the word meekness is kind of, it's, it's not, a, not a good sounding word to us. <laughs> we, we think of meek as like, But you know what the word meek means? If you look it up in the original language, it means strength and power under control. In other words, a meek person could do something about it, but they're humble enough to not move without God's permission, so they will suffer unjustly rather than try to take revenge and they'll wait and see what God does for them. Do you have any idea what you may be missing by not waiting to see what God will do for you if you give him time to do it? Come on, I'm talking to somebody today. God is the God of justice. And the Bible says in several places that he will give us back double for our trouble. Yeah. Job got back twice as much in the end. We all talk about what the poor old guy had to give up, but let's read the end of the story. Come on, your story is not over yet. There's going to be an end to your story. And what you do in the middle of the story partially depends on how it's going to end. 
Job's friends really let him down when he needed them. Instead of helping him, they accused him. And at the end, he prayed for his friends. <laughs> it says it so plainly. And Job prayed for his friends, and God gave him back twice as much as he had. Don't make me come down there. <laughs> come on. Job prayed for the people who hurt him. And God gave him back twice as much as they'd lost. We didn't keep our offense against the TV station. We put it in the offering plate. Never said another word about it. Didn't say another bad thing about it. Didn't grumble about it anymore. And a year later, we got back five times what we gave up. I mean, this is real stuff. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and in due time, he will exalt you. Jesus humbled himself and took on the form of a man. And he humbled himself to obey even to the point of death on the cross. But Sunday always comes after Friday. You with me? You can't have a resurrection without a crucifixion. Come on. Yeah, we need to toughen up a little bit. We need to be willing to go through a few things and maybe be treated unjustly and keep our mouth shut and trust God to see what he will do for us. You want to see the miracle working power of God in your life? Start doing it according to the way he tells you to do it. And then he was exalted on high, and there was given unto him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee must bow in heaven, on the earth, and under the earth. Come on, you might feel like you're dying, bearing the pain of being unjustly treated, but the time will come when you'll be lifted up in power. Have this mind among you, which is in Christ Jesus. Empty yourself of yourself so you can be full of God. Paul prayed unique things for the church. He didn't pray like we pray. In Ephesians 3.20, Paul prayed that they would become just bodies wholly filled with God. Come on, pray that for yourself every day. God, let me just be a body wholly filled with you. Oh, we're doing good. <laughs> Philippians 2, 12 through 16. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, please get this, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and a twisted generation, among whom you are seen as lights in the world. Now, let's go back to... Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now that's about a 10 part series right there. Because you know one of the reasons why, and I don't mean this to be offensive, I'm just trying to get in what I want to get in. Why we have such moral sloppiness in the church. And you know what I mean by moral sloppiness, just compromise and one foot in the kingdom, one foot in the world. and You know, just... You wouldn't even believe some of the questions that people send in and ask me. I'm like, how could you be a Christian and not know the answer to that? You know, is it okay for me to have sex before marriage? Well, you know, no. 
No, that's not okay. Well, but you know, it's the 21st century and everybody lives together today and, you know, no. <laughs> Doesn't matter what everybody's doing, no. And you, you know what I said? If I told you anything other than absolutely no, you wouldn't even respect me. People actually want the truth if they can get somebody that's bold enough to tell it to them. Amen? If we had more reverential fear of God, oh, I would love to write a book on the fear of God and think somebody would buy it. Somebody made a suggestion this morning that I thought was good. I said last night, I'd love to write a book on dying to self and the crucifixion of the flesh and suffering. You know, people won't buy those books. And she said, why don't you write a book and title it, The Book That Nobody Wants? <laughs> and that would make us want it. The fear of the Lord, it's not being afraid of God. It's not being afraid he's gonna hurt you or afraid you're gonna live under some kind of curse if you don't follow every rule and regulation. Jesus became a curse for us. We don't live under the curse anymore. We live under the blessings of God. But still, we need the reverential fear of God. And that basically means that I know that God means what he says. And if he says, do this and be blessed, then if I do that, I'm gonna be blessed. And if he says, do this, and you're gonna have a life of misery, I know that if I do that, I'm gonna have a life of misery. Therefore, I've got enough reverential fear, awe and respect and love for God to do what he tells me to do, whether I want to or not. Come on. What did he mean, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? Well, we know that we're not saved by works, but by grace. No man is saved by anything that he can do, but only what God has done. So he, he didn't mean to work for your salvation, but he said, work out your salvation. Well, one little boy said, well, you can't work out what hasn't been worked in. And see, the good news is, is God puts it in. Come on now, when you're born again, the seed of God is planted in the womb of your spirit and you have just a little bit of everything that God is, it comes in seed form. Just like if a, a husband's seed is planted in the womb of his wife, she'll get pregnant. Well, you're all pregnant with God. Come on. Yeah, I've been working nightly If you think you'll win, ha, not fucking likely I be taking shots, yeah, cold-blooded, icy Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing In the front row, run it up when they hype me The following grows, they know how to ignite me Call me CEO, I've been running shit right, see And I ain't playing games, I create my own lane Making pleasure out of pain, uh Turning losses into gains I'm the boss, I'm making change I've been rocking this exchange, uh Popping off and risking things, gonna make a fucking name I just wanna be famous But I don't want that cheap fame, no I'm not that vain I just wanna be greatness I just wanna be
going off every chance I get I don't really take a loss, well I'll admit That's why I'll make it to the top, yeah I commit And no I'm never getting lost, I get after it Investing in my own stock cause it's faster than Any crypto hits go, let me spend Everything that you see is something I invent and it's only a percent I'm gonna take shots If I miss all, forget it I'll take a fat loss Just to learn all that's in it I'm taking snapshots Learning how to fall and get it I'm getting back up Always stand tall Don't sweat it I never back up I don't miss a thing or regret it I'm always learning You could call me academic daughter-in-law, my sweet daughter-in-law, she's pregnant with our 12th grandchild, and she's just now starting to show. We call it the baby bump. Well, see, some Christians, it takes them a while to start showing. But some of you have been pregnant 50 years, and you're still not showing. Come on. Some of you are still trying to decide if you're going to abort or jump ship or if you're going to go all the way through with God. Come on, you know exactly what I'm saying. So he's saying now, okay, I've worked it in. I've made you right with me by the blood of Christ. Now you work with the Holy Spirit and let that righteousness that's in you be worked out through you so the world can see me through you and through you they can want me too. I don't know how you're still in your seat. I really don't. God never expects you to show something you don't have. You have a new nature. You have the fruit of the Spirit in you. God has filled you full of love. And now he's asking you, let it show. <laughs> let it show. Bear down and give birth. Let it show. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We have to realize, like I said last night, that God sees every single thing that we do. We're not hiding anything from God. You know what, basically? Paul's an apostle. He's a, a very anointed teacher. And... He said he labored. He, he, he made himself sick sometimes, just laboring and working. And he said that Christ might be formed in you. And I can tell you, we had 450 people last night receive Christ as their Savior. And I am so... 
Oh, I am so excited about that. But I'd like to have about five years with you <laughs> to get you from that baby stage. So that's what's good about me being on television every day, teaching the word, because if you are born again in one of our conferences, we want you to get plugged into a good church, but keep listening. Read the books that are available and listen to the teachings and you know, it, it's almost like if you decide you want to be a doctor, you don't expect to be a doctor unless you study. And, and you're, you're looking at a lot of study and a lot of hard work. Well, it's the same way with being a victorious Christian. You, you, don't, you don't just get it because you said a sinner's prayer. You know, the minute you receive Christ, he works it in you. Now, Paul is saying, work it out. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while at work in you. God doesn't just throw you the football and say, now you make the touchdown. He gives you what you need, and then he sent the Holy Spirit to come and be your teacher, the one who walks alongside of, who convicts you of sin and convinces you of righteousness. Come on, get on your feet and give God a big praise. The book of Philippians is one of my absolute favorites. It's had so many things that have encouraged me and inspired me, made a difference in my life. And it has so much practical direction for living a life that is joyful. One example is to believe the best in people. That is such an important lesson instead of believing the worst in people, because when we do, it actually makes us happier and it helps us to all get along better with others. Many, many things to learn by studying Philippians. And it is really helpful to have a guide as you're digging into the word. So Joyce has this brand new book that I think is really going to help you. It's a Bible study for the book of Philippians. So if you check this out, today for your gift of any amount, because we just want to make sure that anybody who wants access to this book can absolutely have it. I think that as you dig into Philippians, you'll find it as helpful as I did. And remember, just do your best, give what you can, and we will get this book out to you as soon as possible. Philippians is such an encouraging book of the Bible, but Paul's letter to the Philippians was written while he was in prison. I have a story from a man in prison coming up next that I think will encourage you. Stay with us.
Yeah.